What's going on guys? So today we'll take a look at this watch. This is the Vertex 2 right here. It's been a long time coming. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> Did send over this watch for me to do a review of, but with no progress, whether to a positive or negative review. This is my own thoughts on this product. And I've had this watch for a while now. I've had it since the beginning of December. So I've had it through December until now. And that includes a 50 mile race, uh, I think three marathons, 100K in there, uh, a half marathon in there as well, and also a bunch of 5K, 10Ks strewn in between. And I've worn this watch for every single one of those races. So I know what this watch is about for myself. For myself, I am a back of the pack runner to mid pack. More of these days, I am a back of pack runner. So I'm not using all the features of this watch, but I'll tell you how this watch works for a guy like me. All right guys, so I reviewed the Vertex one. If you guys saw that, it came in this big old luggage kind of box. And this time they reduced the size of the box that it comes in. And it's this one right here. Just like the other one, it is reusable. And this is a high end watch. This watch is gonna run you about 700 bucks. So there is a, you know, a wow factor that you need to have when you are paying that much money. It's like if you get a Rolex or a Mega Watch, not that I have any of those, but I've seen unboxings of those and they do have a nice unboxing experience. So this one also does have this box right here. And when you open it up, this is what you are greeted to right here. You'll see that it has the watch over here. You have the clasps over here that are also very easy to put on. We'll talk about that later. And you'll see over here, it says explore perfection so that is what they're using as their hashtag and then if you take it out of the box over here take out the straps this is going to be an easy clasp system where you just put it on and it just clips on just like this so if you guys see this is going to clip on like that and then just like that so that's it the watch is on and I can put it on my wrist. You can see that I am matching my watch today. This is the orange color variant of the watch. So I'm wearing my Adam Strong shirt today. And then if you look into the bottom of this over here, you're gonna have the user guide over here. I've never even opened it up. And you also have the charging cable in this little box over here, if you guys see that. So yeah, the box is nice. Uh, it is gonna be waterproof. You can't put other stuff in it. I could probably see myself using this as something to store some of my gear, like some of my microphones, some other stuff like that. That is needed to protect those things and this will definitely protect it. So this is a double use box. They do tell you to reuse this if you do have this box. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the watch itself. So this is the Coros Vertex 2 right here. You can see that this is a large display watch. It's a 1.4 inch display. It also has 280 by 280, 64 colors. So that's gonna be a nice little screen that you're gonna be able to see and it's gonna be big enough for, you know, even the oldest of eyes to see without your reader glasses because it does have a nice big screen where you can see right here, everything is easily read. Even if you do put it on the run mode where you can see the data fields, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, really big, nice screen and the glass on top of it, this is, sapphire glass so this is going to be scratch resistant i think this is the second hardest material next to diamond so this is what you'll get with a premium watch like the chorus vertex 2 and uh yeah this is scratch resistant i've worn it for a lot of runs like i've told you run it for runs worn it casually and there's not a scratch on it in fact this thing looks as new as a day that I got it out of the box. So this is a 1.4 inch screen. It does have a little bezel and the bezel on this one really isn't that noticeable. You'll see that the screen is pretty large size. The size of the watch is 50.3 millimeters by 50.3 millimeters by 15.7 millimeters right here. So this is a pretty thick and heavy watch. This is gonna be about 89 grams. So, you know, it does get a little bit used to wearing on your wrist, but after you've worn it for a little bit, you do get used to the weight on your watch. And I tend to like heavy watches myself. Granted, I do not sleep with this watch, although you can sleep with this watch. I feel like it is a little bit too bulky and a little bit weighty for my wrist, especially when I am sleeping with it. So I generally do not sleep with this watch on. 
but you can, and I, I've done it before, but I just don't like anything on my wrist. Even the lightest watches, I don't like on my wrist to sleep on. So this is the back of the watch right here. You'll see that it does have all these sensors. It has the optical pulse oximeter, the optical rate heart sensor. Inside of it, it has the ECG sensor, the barometric altimeter, and accelerometer. Inside of it, a compass, gyroscope, and a thermometer. So this watch really has a lot of stuff that many of us runners really don't need, but when you are paying 700 bucks for a watch, you know, you get some of the extras that many of the, you know, normal human beings in the world won't need. And this definitely has that. So that is the back of the watch over here. And then the straps, the straps are made out of silicone and for a wash, you can see how stretchy the silicone band is. I have no complaints about it at all. It does stretch to fit your wrist comfortably like that. And although it is tight because of that stretch that the silicone watch has, it's comfortable on the wrist. And you can see on my wrist, I'm 5'11", 240 pounds. This is how it looks on my wrist. And like I said, it looks really good. And to be honest with you, whenever I do go out and about and have this watch on, it is something that people will comment on, especially if they're a runner. They'll look at your watch and say, what are you wearing on your wrist? And I'll tell them that this is the Vertex 2. Uh, I've had that happen multiple times. So this is an eye catcher of a watch. And I think it looks really good as well. So what is the bezel made of over here? This is a grade five titanium alloy with a PVD coating. So that's just gonna make it more scratch resistant. And like I said, I've worn this for a long time. And you could barely see that I've used it. I don't see any scratches on it whatsoever at all. So yeah, this watch has been put through the ringer and it looks just as good as it did on day one. And then if you go to the right side of the watch, this is where you'll have all the buttons. So this is the top button over here. This is generally for to turn on the brightness. If you see that, it is dark and now it's bright. Not very well seen here because the light is on. And then you have the dial where you can unlock your watch and also select other modes with that. So this is also your select button. And then you have the bottom button where you can see you can go back with it. And then if you hold it down, you can go to this other menu over here. All right, so let's go ahead and get through the screens of this watch. So this is a screen that I like on my watch. You can't pick other screens over here. Like if you go to the app, you can see right here, there are a ton of different screens over here. They have a Pac-Man screen and you can choose whatever you want. Uh, this is the one that I like. This one has how much is charged. We'll talk about the charge of this crazy watch in a little bit. It has my steps for the day uh, and everything else on there. And if you scroll down, this is the scroll scrolling button that the Coral watches have. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. Sometimes I do accidentally hit it on a run, but if you do lock it, it will prevent that. And there's two ways you can lock it. You can either lock it by having you unlock it with scrolling or pressing and holding the button down for three seconds. But let's look at the next screen that it has. So the first off, you got your calories over here and you can adjust these any way you want to as well. So this is the calories and if you press onto it, you can control it by going up and down over here. So right here is the calories. If you swipe up, you'll see how many minutes a day you worked out on average. You swipe up again, you'll see your uh, you, you'll see your steps over here and then swipe up again. You'll see your running performance, 100%, that's good. Next one, you have your race predictor. And for me, I find that the race predictor is pretty accurate. I used it for my uh, 5K and 10K recently and it was pretty much accurate to plus or minus two minutes. So pretty accurate. And I think that I'm gonna use it for my half marathon. So on my half marathon tomorrow, I'll be trying to go about 221 pace or better. And then over here, you'll see the paces that you need to go for your race predictor times. And over here is gonna be your recovery time or fitness level. And over here is gonna be your fitness load. I have been testing other watches. So right there, it's not that great. And then if you go up again, you'll see your four week intensity distribution where you'll see what level of fitness you've been training at. So I've been doing 28% easy. 47% medium and 25% hard. I think I should up my easy level of intensity because that's not good to be training too hard all the time. And again, you'll see my recovery. It says that I'm 100% recovery, ready to go hard on my training. So yeah, that's basically it for the screens. And then if you hold down this bottom button over here, you'll see one of the features that this watch has is Topo Maps and I have one over here. If you go to here, you'll actually see the map. So if we start the course, you'll see right here, this is the map. This is one of the routes that I have on the map. And I could actually 
go up closer to it if I want to, and then move it with my finger. I, I think that it's a little bit delayed when you're doing this, and I generally don't use this feature, to be honest with you, I never use this feature as well, but I'm sure it's gonna be good for those trail runs, especially if something where you're not used to the territory or the route, this is gonna be a good feature to have if you don't carry your phone with you because these maps are preloaded into the watch and yeah, pretty cool feature. So if you go down, this one will show you the maps right here. So right here you see basically where I live. Hopefully you guys aren't looking too closely, but it will get the data. You have all the maps you want and it's preloaded into your watch as well. This one is your satellite signals. You can see right here, I am indoors, so the signal is weak right now, but this will make sure that you know everywhere you're connected. It does have all satellite dual frequency GNSS chipset, so I've heard from what they've told and what they said that this will work well in mountains, in any type of territory. I saw that they had one where uh, some runners ran through the Grand Canyon and did rim to rim to rim. I also did that as well with the original Vertex and they said that the new chipset on this watch tracked those guys pretty accurately. So I was impressed with that when they showed that on their social media. Next one you have is your stopwatch over here. So you could just, you know, see your stopwatch. And then uh, the next thing you have over here is gonna be your timer. If you want to set your timer to whatever you want it to be. The next screen is going to be your alarm. So this is going to beep and buzz at you in the morning whenever you want to set it for. And then you have your watch faces where you can select whatever watch face you, you want. Like I said, it does have a ton of different watch faces. They're always updating the watch faces all the time. And then you have your systems over here. Pair your phone, sensors, if the Wi-Fi. This, thing, this does have Wi-Fi, so Koros is always updating their watches. In fact, I just got an update today. And the good thing about Koros is that it updates all its watches to what it can handle. If the technology in the watch can handle it, it'll update it to the newest software. So a lot of the features that the Vertex 2 has, the Vertex 1 also has. If the technology can handle it, it will have that. But still, this one will have a little bit more. And then you also have music on this watch. This is something new for this watch. A lot of watches before you can control your music. I know that Garmin is one of the only other sport specific watches that you can control music with or store music inside your watch. And this Coros also does that as well. Unfortunately, this one does not have any like Spotify or Amazon linked to it. You can only download music onto it from what you have. So you can download MP3 files onto here and connect it to your Bluetooth headphones and you can listen to music that way. To be honest with you, I don't buy a lot of music. I just use a lot of streaming service. So this feature isn't too useful for me. I guess if you do download some music off of YouTube or wherever, that may be frowned upon, but that's when it's gonna be useful for you if you do buy your music or download your music somehow off of the interwebs. For me, I don't download music, so I've only tested it out and it sounds good, but for me, it's just something that it's gonna be a non-feature for me. And if you go here, this is where it has camera control. I do have an Insta360 ONE X2 and it will pair with it. For me, it's really a non-feature again because I don't think that the Insta360 ONE X2 really needs a remote control record start or stop just because it's just a selfie stick. Generally have a pretty good memory card on there. So you can set this up wherever you want to. This is the old one, I, the other one's in my truck, but you could just set it up wherever you want press the button, walk away, and do it like that. It's a feature that's kind of cool to have, but not really too useful for me, especially for someone like me who uses the Insta360 ONE X2 for a lot of his running videos. I, ha I have this feature on my watch, I've never used it. So really a uh, feature that's interesting, but not really needed. So that's pretty much it. It does have do not disturb mode where you would turn off all your notifications and also has a compass. So you can see cool little compass over here. And then it also has a feature where you can broadcast your heart rate to machines like you're at the gym and you wanna see your accurate heart rate on the treadmill or the rowing machine, uh, anything compatible with that, it will be able to broadcast your heart rate. It has a pulse ox over here. Right now it shows that I am 97% one month ago. So I actually haven't had it measured. Let's see how well it, it does in measuring my SpO2 right now. All right, so I am at 99%. That's good. I don't have any issues. Uh, and then uh, you have your HRV. The HRV is done by doing exactly what it says on the watch. You just have to sit still and put your fingers around the bezel. So you stick it right there on the bezel. And then you, just stand, you have to stand still for one minute. 
So the HRV is something that's going to measure your stress. And like it says right here, my stress level is a medium. I am making a video right now. Pretty stressful to do one of these little review videos over here. So that's something that a lot of watches don't really have and uh, something that this Vertex 2 has and it's pretty cool. So this watch can also go down to 10 atmospheres which is deeper than any of, any of the other watches that I know. I know a lot of them are about five atmospheres. One thing that we do have to talk about this watch is the battery life. And I think that that's the most important and most impressive feature of these Coros watches. This watch, I've had it since December, right? I probably only needed to charge it three times, maybe two times, but I've charged it maybe four or five times since using it. I never have to worry about the battery life. If I ever think that my battery is low before a race, it's usually not. I will charge it up before an ultra marathon. Not that I need to, but just because I want that security knowing that it is fully charged, but it really doesn't need it. It could go a long time. 140 hours on full GPS mode and on ultra max mode, it goes 240 hours. So I don't know what situation you would need that in, but if you are on a long trip and you are away from your house and your charger for multiple days, multiple weeks, you will have peace in mind that knowing that this watch will last through all your runs and through your whole trip because this watch is a watch that just won't die. And it also lasts 60 days on standby. So you only really have to charge this watch every month and a half. So every 45 to 50 days, that's when you have to charge this watch because it just lasts forever. And again, all the Chorus watches have a long battery life. This one has an extremely long battery life. And I'm really impressed by it. Again, that's one of the biggest features that I really like about it that I don't have to charge this watch all of the time. All right, so let's go through some of his sports profiles. So it does have a ton of sports profiles. It has run, indoor run, trail run, track run, hike, multi-pitch, mountain climbing, bike, indoor bike, pool swim, open water, speed surfing, windsurfing, rowing, indoor rowing, white water, flat water, triathlon, strength, gym cardio, GPS, ski, snowboard, cross country skiing, ski touring, multi-sport, and walk. This is one thing that a lot of course users really wanted was a walk mode because it didn't have that before. So now it does have it. You also have your workouts that you could put onto your Coros app, use that way. You also have the training plans that you can put on there. And that's about it. Let's look at the run mode because this is a running channel. We'll look at the run mode. What I did for my run, what I have on mine is basically every single thing I want. So this has eight data fields on it. I like to have everything so I can look at it whenever I'm running. The ones that I have on here is distance, pace, lap pace, heart rate, average heart rate, lap time, time of day, and then total time here in the bottom. And you can of course change that to whatever you want. So if you want just your heart rate over here, you can do that. And again, all these fields are customizable to whatever you want. So you could have whatever you want. As far as the GPS on this watch, I found it to be reliable. I've used it with my other watches that compared it to the 245 and to my other watches, and it's all been the same. Again, I don't think there's any watch out there right now, especially one going for 700 bucks, that's gonna have a really, really bad GPS. This GPS is going to work for all my runs. It worked for my 50 miler, it worked for my 100K, it worked for my marathons, my half marathons, and it's been suitably accurate to my liking. I'm not very nitpicky on the GPS, as long as it isn't too short or too long, I'm happy with it. And the heart rate and the accuracy of the optical heart rate, it's just not gonna be as accurate as other other watches you're gonna have a chest heart rate monitor those are always gonna be more accurate than anything that's gonna be on your wrist just because there's a lot of things that can go wrong if you are hairy or hit more hairy than me you're gonna have issues with the optical heart rate monitor also if you are moving around a lot you're not having it on the right area you generally want to have it below this bone right here if it's over there it'll be a little bit more accurate but again it's not gonna be as accurate as a chest heart rate monitor so for GPS, I think it's fine. But if you are really nitpicky about heart rate tracking, definitely get yourself a chest heart rate monitor. Finally, how much does this Vertex 2 cost? This watch will cost you $699 on their website. And it is a very expensive watch. This watch is made for those people who really want to do mountaineering because it does have this dial over here. It is a little bit thicker for people with thicker gloves. You'll be able to use that dial without having to take off your gloves. And it also has a ton of mapping features that most runners don't really need. I think if you are into ultra running or mountaineering, you're going to want the topographical map or the breadcrumb navigation or back to the start features that it does have. But for a normal runner, this watch may be a little bit too much of a watch 
for you. But if you do have it on your watch and you're just a normal runner like me, you're not going to hate on it because it is a nice looking watch. Titanium alloy bezel, sapphire glass on top of it. So what you're paying for is a top of the line watch. I do wish it had some features like partnering up with Spotify or Amazon so you have streaming music on here. I also wish for the money it had something like find your phone or payments on here because payments is something that's really useful out on the run, especially if you don't want to carry your phone or your wallet out on the run. Something simple as payments is something that I really enjoy in these running smart watch type of watches, especially for $700. And one of the best things about this watch is going to be the battery life. 140 hours on full GPS mode, 240 hours on ultra max mode. This watch for sure is a beast. So who is this watch for? This watch is going to be for somebody who wants a nice head turning watch on their wrist. It's definitely not for everybody, but if you are one of those people who like to have a watch that you never have to charge at all, probably every 45 to 50 days, then this watch is going to be for you. Like I said, if I have this on my wrist, I'm not going to complain about it. It is a little pricey at 700 bucks, but if you know what you're getting and know what you're paying for, you can't complain about this watch. That's why I'm going to give this watch a Goku Runner thumbs up. It's not for everybody, but if you do buy this watch, you won't regret it. It could use a few things that other watches have, but in general, I like this watch. Sapphire glass, long battery life, and also the GPS rocks as well. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Vertex 2. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next one. Peace.